The internet is full of dramatic videos about venomous snakes. A lot of misinformation is presented in order to get more views and likes. Misleading content posted by well-known internet figures with large audiences can cause more fear of these reptiles instead of admiration and respect. In this video, we will focus on the deadly venomous snakes. So when should we call a certain snake species deadly venomous? We use these words for species which have the potential of killing a human with a single bite. One of the common issues when people talk about deadly venomous snakes is confusing terms, the most venomous and the most dangerous. Importantly, the most venomous snakes are not necessarily the most dangerous. The most venomous snakes in different regions of the world are usually not the ones that cause most snake bites in those regions. Therefore, they are not the most dangerous. There are several factors which make a snake species particularly dangerous. Of course, it should have venom toxic enough to kill a human with a single bite. Adding to that, it should be common and tolerate habitat alteration. If it thrives close to humans, the chance of dangerous encounters gets high. The last important thing is the behavior of the snake species. If it's usually nervous and ready to bite when encountered, snake bites can happen. A combination of all factors we mentioned makes a snake species very dangerous. We will now visit different regions of the world and show you examples of the most venomous snakes and the most dangerous snakes that live there. Africa. The continent is famous for its large and deadly venomous snakes. One of the most venomous snake species in Africa is the black mamba. Many people tell stories about black mambas which chased someone and were very aggressive without any provocation. Yet, there are no reliably recorded cases of such behavior. Black mambas are shy snakes which try to avoid confrontations with humans. Yes, if they are cornered or attacked, they will defend themselves. People usually have a very poor understanding of snake behavior and interpret it incorrectly. For example, a snake crawling quickly towards a person in order to escape into dense vegetation behind that person can be mistakenly accused of being aggressive and wrongly interpreted as chasing the person. In reality, black mambas bite very few people the same applies to the other three species of mambas. Drop for drop, the most venomous snake in Africa is the boomslang. Similarly to mambas, boomslangs are shy and elusive snakes. Bites are very uncommon. This is the forest cobra, the longest true cobra in the world. It has a very potent venom, and it is one of the most venomous African cobras. Similarly to mambas and the boomslang, it rarely bites people. The most dangerous snakes of Africa include some of the less venomous cobras, which are often very abundant in proximity to humans. The most dangerous cobra in Southern Africa is the Mozambique Spitting Cobra. Another very dangerous species of cobra is the Black-Necked Spitting Cobra. It has a wide range in Sub-Saharan Africa. The most dangerous snakes of Africa are some viper species. Forget the massive West African Gaboon Viper with the longest fangs of all venomous snakes in the world. 
This species lives secretively in rainforests, and rarely comes into contact with humans. Its relative, the puff adder, is a different story. With a wide distribution across sub-Saharan Africa, a common occurrence in many habitats including agricultural land, large size, potent venom, long fangs and nervous nature, this is the most dangerous snake in Africa. Puff adders are extremely well camouflaged and can be easily missed by humans visiting their home range. If they feel threatened, they strike with amazing speed and power. Africa also has several species of carpet vipers, which are often very common in certain regions and have very potent venom. Despite their small size, they definitely belong to the most dangerous snakes in Africa. Similarly to the puff adder, they are nervous when they feel threatened. They tolerate habitat alteration and blend in with their surroundings very well. Asia is home to the longest venomous snake in the world, the King Cobra. You might be surprised by the fact that it does not belong to the most venomous snakes in the world and it also does not belong to the most dangerous snakes in the world. Bites from king cobras are very rare and usually inflicted on snake handlers. The most venomous snakes of Asia include some species of crates, true cobras or black desert cobras. Some of them also belong to the most dangerous snakes in Asia. Crates in general, such as this extremely venomous Malayan crate, are secretive, nocturnal, and don't often come into contact with humans. They rarely bite when they feel threatened, and therefore cause a very small number of snake bites. There is one exception, the common crate from the Indian subcontinent. It often lives in areas with a high human population and accidental bites happen when people sleep outside or don't close their doors properly. They can also step on the snake when walking after dark with no light. The most dangerous cobra species in Asia is probably the Indian cobra, also called the spectacled cobra. It is a very common species which thrives in agricultural land and even urban landscapes. It has a very potent venom and bites many people on the Indian subcontinent every year. The monocled cobra is the most medically important cobra species in Southeast Asia. When it comes to vipers in Asia, some of the most venomous species also belong to the most dangerous ones. The most dangerous snake species in Asia, and probably the whole world, is the Russell's viper. These vipers are perfectly camouflaged and very common in the highly populated Indian subcontinent. They are unpredictable and strike with incredible speed when they feel in danger. It is important to mention a few other medically significant species of vipers. The saw-scaled viper is locally common, has a very toxic venom and a nervous nature. The hump-nosed pit viper bites many people in southern India and the Malayan pit viper is a serious threat to people working in agricultural land in Southeast Asia. Snake faunas of North America and South America are quite similar, with venomous snakes represented mainly by coral snakes and pit vipers. Coral snakes are a very diverse group of elapid snakes. Their venom is usually very potent, 
but they rarely grow larger than one meter, and encounters with humans are quite rare. Most bites happen when people handle these snakes. Coral snakes usually don't live close to humans. The Americas have a high diversity of pit vipers. The third longest venomous snake in the world, the South American Bushmaster, has a potent venom and large quantities of it, but it rarely comes into contact with humans. Some pit vipers from the Americas have even more potent venom, like the tiger rattlesnake and the Mojave rattlesnake. Venom toxicity also does not correlate with the number of bites and the level of danger for humans in this case. Many more bites are caused by far less venomous, but a very common rattlesnake species with a wide range, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. The most dangerous snakes of the Americas are almost certainly two species of American lanceheads, the Terciopello and the Common Lancehead. Often mistakenly called the fur de lance, both species are very common in their range and cause many bites. They thrive in proximity to humans thanks to the abundance of small mammals. These pit vipers are well camouflaged and ready to bite if threatened. The terciopello lives in Central America and the northern part of South America. The common lancehead lives in the tropical lowlands of the northern half of South America. The last continent we visit is Australia. It is famous for being inhabited by many extremely venomous snakes. Most of them would not be considered very dangerous as they don't bite many people. The best possible example is the inland taipan. This is the most venomous snake in the world. Its venom is so toxic because it lives in a very harsh, arid environment, and it cannot risk losing any prey item when it finally finds it. Inland taipans hunt small mammals living in deep cracks in the desert soil. This species lives in the middle of nowhere very far from people. The chance of being bitten by it is pretty much zero. In contrast to the inland taipan stands the eastern brown snake, the second most venomous snake on our planet. This species has a wide range in the eastern part of Australia and tolerates habitat alteration. When encountered, it is often very nervous and defensive. Eastern brown snakes are responsible for more bites and deaths than any other snake species in Australia. Other medically significant snakes in the region include the tiger snake, several species of brown snakes and the coastal taipan population that lives in Papua New Guinea. It is important to know that the overall number of bites in Australia and surrounding islands is much smaller than in Asia, Africa or the Americas. Many highly venomous species like the common death adder, Stephen's banded snake, highland copperhead or the rough scaled snake cause very few bites. There are also only very few deaths per year in Australia, thanks to efficient health care and free antivenom easily available for everyone. We recommend checking reliable research using the median lethal dose toxic unit, also called LD50, to compare venom toxicity of different species. 
the value of LD50 for a substance is the dose required to kill half the members of a tested population after a specified test duration. A lower LD50 value is indicative of higher toxicity. The median lethal dose of snake toxins is usually determined by tests on mice. There are four methods by which the LD50 test is determined, using subcutaneous, intravenous, intramuscular, or intraperitoneal injection of venom. Subcutaneous injection is the most applicable to actual bites. You just finished watching a video created by The Living Zoology. Thank you. I'm Matej. And I'm Zuzana. We are a married couple from the Czech Republic and the only two people creating videos for this channel. We founded The Living Zoology Film Studio in 2014 during our studies of zoology. I'm a doctor of zoology. And I have a master's degree in zoology and also in the education of biology. We both love nature and wild animals. Filming wildlife and education is the main goal of the Living Zoology YouTube channel. We mostly focus our activities on snakes. Why? Because they belong to the most misunderstood animals on our planet. Most of our time, money and energy goes into traveling the world in search of snakes. We aim to film the natural history footage. It was never our goal to show ourselves in front of the camera. Nature can speak for itself in most of our videos. There is a long process behind each episode you watch on our channel. We carefully plan our trips, then we work very hard during the days and nights in order to find snakes in rainforests, savannas or deserts. A huge part of our work is done at home, on the computer. It is me who edits and presents all our footage on YouTube and social media. If you like our mission, you can join those who already support our channel as members. There are three levels of support to choose from. Your monthly support will help us to continue creating high quality content. Another option is to buy our merchandise. Thank you to those who already support us. We really appreciate it.